in the name of the Lord. Now, if he wants to be a great complex theologian or scholar, this is all right, if that is his desire. But as for me, I like it simple, straightforward, factual, and practical. I believe that Jesus Christ is the greatest scientist who ever lived. A scientist is a person who operates according to formula. And that formula will always work under the appropriate circumstances. For example, you always get a light if you use the formula that produces a light. And Jesus gives a certain formula about how to live and it never fails, it always works. So here's a church on probably the most famous street in the world, Fifth Avenue, New York City. Where is there a more famous street than this one? And ultimately, everybody comes to Fifth Avenue Unfortunately, they don't all get into Marble Church, but they come up and down this street. But there are other great cities in the country, and they have great churches on great avenues. And what they are, these churches, are receiving stations for the poor, the unhappy, the sick, the mixed up, people of the world and they come into the church and here they meet the great scientist who tells them how they got that way and who gives them guidance on how to improve themselves. So we deal with practical human problems. And there were two people who spoke to me about a human problem, and I decided I would deal with it this morning. I was at a luncheon, sitting beside a very beautiful, personable, modern young woman, exquisitely dressed, and uh, she was a little bit difficult to talk with, slightly unresponsive, and I tried out my best jokes and everything, but <laughs> they didn't really work on her. Finally, uh, rather diffidently, she said, I'd like to ask you a question. Why is it that people like some people and they don't like others? And I was about to give her a very wise remark on this when rather pathetically she said, nobody likes me. Why do you think that is? Well, I said in the first place, I'm no expert psychologically. And in the second place, I haven't known you all that long. I did notice that she had a rather firm way of closing her lips, uh, which indicated a rigidity uh, of personality, but I didn't think that was the time to go into it, would it? <laughs> but the lady has haunted me ever since. I know who she is. Maybe we can have a talk sometime. And then I was in a home where they had four children, two of them in high school, two below high school. Nice home, nice Christian atmosphere, wonderful parents. And the boy was uncommunicated. He was a senior in high school. And uh, when everybody was out of the room, 
He said, uh, Dr. Peel, my father tries to get me to read your books. And he said, I've cracked a couple of them. That was the exact language he used. He said, you deal with personal problems, don't you? I said, well, as far as we're conversant with them. He said, I am so shy. I'm even embarrassed, he says, talking to you. I hate to go into a company with other people. I'm shy. I'm self-conscious. I'm always uh, conscious of my own self. And he said, I'm, I'm a loner. Nobody likes me. But there are other kids in the school no smarter than I am, no, no nicer homes than mine. Everybody likes them. Why doesn't anybody like me? Oh, I said, there is one who likes you. I like you. And I know why I like you, because you say you're shy and self-conscious and embarrassed. And I say, I said to him, when I was your age, I suffered that terrible disease. And I know how anybody feels who is that way. So I like you. And we shook hands and we said we were friends. But he's haunted me ever since. Now, looking at you, there's nobody here afflicted with this problem, I'm sure, because you all look so nice that everybody love you. But still, you can't get this many people together without on the law of averages there being somebody here who's like that. William James, the father of American psychology, said, that the deepest longing of human nature is the desire to be appreciated. That's another way of saying it's the desire to be liked, to be loved. We all want to be loved. That's why the Christian religion is so powerful, because it's a religion of love. God loves you. That's the great appeal of Jesus, because he loved people. Now it is a fact that if you like people genuinely, they will like you back. If you don't like people genuinely, they'll pick it up and they won't like you back. Well, one of the great contributions of Christianity is to put love in your heart for people. And then when you've got a genuine love for people, they will love you in return. Before I entered the ministry, as I've stated here before, I worked around at newspapers. And I worked for an editor in Detroit, Michigan. The paper on which I worked went out of business after I left there. It was called the Detroit Journal. And this man was editor of it, and I was a cub reporter. And one day he said to me, Norman, do you like people? I said, yes, I like people. Well, he said, do you genuinely like people? Deeply, do you love people? I said, well, most of them. He said, you've got to love them all if you're going to succeed in this business. Now, he was a rare kind of editor, I grant you. He said, because if you're going to be a newspaper reporter, you're going to come in contact with bad people, mean people, wicked people, all kinds of people. And you mustn't hate them. You've got to love them. And remember that no matter how bad they seem, there's good in them. And besides, he said, if you like them, you'll be able to go anywhere and get any kind of a story. Always love 
people. He loved people. People, he said, will love you back. Now, the other day I picked up the paper here and I read of the death of a man I really loved. His name was Dr. Samuel Rosen. He was the originator of the Stapes operation of the inner ear on the smallest bone in the body. He has probably helped more people to hear than any physician of our time, Dr. Samuel Rosen. He operated on my wife for the Stapes operation. Uh, and when he operated on her under a local anesthetic, he came over and he leaned down close up against her ear and in the lowest possible whisper, I can't emulate it here because we're on a television program and it wouldn't be heard and radio but the lowest possible whisper, and he said in the roots here, I love you. And she heard it clear as a bell for the first time in several years. And she looked up at him, and with great feeling she said, and Dr. Rosen, I love you too. And even though he was having this love affair with my wife, <laughs> I told him that I loved him. <laughs> and when I saw in the paper the other day that he was dead, tears rolled down my cheeks. He was a great physician. He loved people. And everybody loved him back. That's all in the world you have to do. Just love them. Well, sometimes that becomes hard here in New York because there's so many people. You try to get on a Madison Avenue bus on a hot day when they have heat in the bus. <laughs> And it's packed with people, and nobody will give you a seat. And you say, I don't like all these people. <laughs> That's not the time to say that. Just love those people. Unless you run into an experience like I did the other day on a Madison Avenue bus. A boy, about 15 or 16, got up and offered me his seat. And I said, no, son, thank you very much. You're a very nice boy, but I can stand. He says, my mother always told me to stand up for old people. <laughs> I said, well, I don't see any old people. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I kind of liked him. I made him keep the seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Love people. They're all around, the most lovable people you can possibly imagine. They're all around everywhere. It's no hardship, no difficulty to love these people. If you've got love in your heart, and if you haven't love in your heart, go to the one who'll put love in your heart. And then go out and give that love to other people. And those other people will love you back. You don't need to be shy nor bashful nor self-conscious and think people don't like you. That girl that spoke to me and the little boy, they don't need to be unloved. All they have to do is start loving. And when you love, you get loved back. I run into the most astonishing taxi cab drivers. This one was in Philadelphia. 
And I had to go down there to a meeting. And I went down on the Amtrak, or whatever they call it. And it was very slow. And by the time I got to the, 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 the Phil North Philadelphia station, or the 30th Street or whatever it was, I was in a hurry because I had to get to this meeting. I'd been told if I didn't get to this meeting, civilization would fall. <laughs> so I dashed out of the station and I saw a taxi driver and I said, come here, I'm in a hurry. And uh, I jumped in the cab, I gave him the address and he didn't move. <laughs> he says, where are you steaming for, brother? He said, don't you know you'll have a heart attack doing that way? <laughs> Nothing is so important as you are making it by your attitude of haste. He says, you ought to read an article I read in a Philadelphia paper. And he began to tell me what was in this article and I recognized that I myself had written the article. <laughs> was a big fellow with a great big neck. He was in folds, the neck was. And he said, sit back there, boy, and I'll take you where you want to go. And on the way down, he said, young fella, let me give you a little advice. And when he got off that young fella business, I liked him all the more. <laughs> he said, the thing to do is just do as much as you can and then don't do any more. He said, do you remember what St. Paul said? Having done all, stand. And he added, St. Paul didn't say it, but I'm sure he meant it, that having done all you can do, sit. <laughs> or even lie down. I said, where'd you read that about St. Paul? He said, where do you suppose? In the Bible. I read the Bible every day of my life, morning and night. He said, I am a born again Christian. And when I got out of the car, he says, I like you, son. I was getting younger all the time. When I, <laughs> I like you, son. I, I first was going to give him a dollar. But when he got to that son business, I actually gave him five dollars. And I was ashamed to tell my wife I'd given him so much because she's so frugal, but she's present here this morning. I gave him five dollars, so help me. <laughs> yes, you see, all you have to do is go around Liking people, loving them, appreciating them. Maybe, maybe it's more important to esteem them. Hold them in high opinion. As children of God, created by the wonderful Heavenly Father, who when he put us all here in this great big mixed up city, gave us something to go along with it, love. Love people, and they'll love you back. Like people, and they'll like you. But you know, it's one thing to make a speech about this. And I suppose you agree with about everything I've said because there's nothing controversial in this, unless you're just mad at life. But how do you get changed so that you are able to love people. Now there's only one person who can change you. And that isn't yourself. It's Jesus Christ who can make you so attractive, so sweet, so beautiful, so strong, so nice, so lovable, 
Only Jesus. I've seen him take the meanest people and by the alchemy of his loving touch, make them kind. I've seen him take the most selfish people who lived entirely for themselves and made them compassionate and outgoing. You and I have seen him take weak people, make them strong, take sinful people and make them good. And how's that done? Simply by you saying to Jesus Christ, I don't want to be this way anymore and mean it. And he'll say to you, son, daughter, receive the Holy Spirit and you're not that way anymore. And then you'll have love in your heart. Your human relations will be beautiful all the way. Our Heavenly Father, we've talked about a very simple and yet complex thing because our emotional attitudes are all tied up with ideas which are erroneous. And they've got to be extricated, and only the genius of the hand of the great physician can accomplish that. And now we have a great congregation of wonderful people make everyone to go from this church healed in body, mind, and spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.